Good evening, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church, sitting here in my, uh, in my home, relaxing, on vacation, and uh, winding down my day. But I wanted to bring Compline Night Prayer to you uh, as I pre-record these. I'm thinking of our congregation and the many other people who uh, find these helpful for their uh, time of rest at night. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence this evening on this festival day of the 31st of July, St. Ignatius of Loyola. Ignatius, I'll tell you a little bit more about this great spiritual leader of his day. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence. We are on page 127 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 127. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let us put ourselves, let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, in word, in deed, and in what has have been left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all of our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is a portion of Psalm 119. We are on page 777 in your Book of Common Prayer, also found in your Holy Scriptures. Psalm 119, verses 161 through 168, verses 161 through 168. Let us pray this, these psalms together. Rulers have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad because of your promise, as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and harbor them, but your law is my love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace may have, I, have they who love your law. For them there is no stumbling block. I, hope, I have hoped for your salvation, O Lord, and have fulfilled your commandments. I have kept your decrees. I have loved them deeply. I have kept your commandments and decrees, for all my ways are before you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures this evening come from Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 17 through 21. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, I have, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will find, have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was mentioning, today we're celebrating Ignatius of Loyola, 
And you're probably wondering, as I, I also mentioned at noon today, why are we celebrating a guy who is a Roman Catholic and didn't like Protestants? Well, the, the point is, is that he was a great teacher, he was a great theologian and spiritual leader. And these are the qualities of a Christian man that we lift up, even in the Episcopal Church, as Protestants. And so today, we lift up Ignatius, who uh, lived during the, uh, parts, the latter part of the 16th century. Um, early, excuse me, he, he passed away in the mid-16th century. Um, and he started the Society of Jesus, which is a community which are better known as Jesuits. Um, they're not a monastic community, but they were a, they're a religious order community. He did all this through his own personal struggles and journeys, uh, through his own boyhood and young adult life, um, having wonderful dreams of being an adventurer and a swashbuckling uh, knight. These didn't happen, but what did happen is he had a conversion experience when he read the life of Christ written by a Carthesian monk at that time, it was there that he also felt a draw to Jesus in dedicating his life. He read the imitation of Christ by Thomas Kempis and then also uh, is probably where he got his inspiration to write the most famous part of his whole life was his spiritual exercises, which would lead many society of Jesus into a relationship with Christ in a deep, compassionate way. If you've never done it, it is a 21-day uh, silent retreat experience. It's incredibly powerful. I've done it uh, twice uh, and encourage people to try to have a spiritual retreat at least once a year, at least for three days if possible. Ignatius of Loyola was an inspiration to many in his community. It was at that time in 1540 when the Society of Jesus by uh, Pope uh, Paul III was uh, uh, dedicated and uh, ratified to be a community of men uh, within the Roman Catholic Church. We give a lot for this man and we, I'd like to end with this reflection for you as you go to bed tonight, which I think is a beautiful prayer and a wonderful way for us to part of end our day. I'd like to leave you with this. He wrote this on uh, this date in 1556, when he died, just before he died. Teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou dearest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for any reward save that uh, of knowing that we do thy will. Amen. Let us continue our prayers as we can uh, on page 132 in your Compline Night Prayer, page 132. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And my sisters and brothers, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. This is our prayer, for our colic prayer for this day on the Feast of Ignatius of Loyola. Almighty God, who called Ignatius of Loyola to be to the service of your divine majesty and to seek you in all things. Give us also the grace to labor without counting the cost and to seek no reward other than knowing that we would do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever 
and ever. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. And now, my friends, let us offer, and offer our prayers of the people Prayers of the People on page 388, Prayers of the People, Form 3, page 388. If you'd please join me in our prayers. We pray for your holy, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all those who are spiritual leaders and their pastors and wherever they may be as priests within our congregations and for the honor to be able to serve the people of Grace Episcopal Church as your priest. We pray for Bishop Terry White, our presiding bishop, Michael Curry. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for all who are running for office at this time. We pray for all of our government leaders and the struggles they are facing, especially with this pandemic. We pray for all their hard work, Lord. Guide them with your holy wisdom that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We especially pray for those who are struggling with the coronavirus. We pray, Lord, for all those who are sick or struggling with anxiety because of social isolation or depression. We pray for those that they may recover from this disease and this terrible virus. We also pray for all the doctors and nurses caring for all those patients in our hospitals and nursing homes, for all cancer patients. We pray, O oh Lord, for your healing presence to be with them, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We especially pray for those who are dying this day and for those who have died today. We pray, Lord, for them as they go and meet with you in your heavenly kingdom. We pray as well for their families who mourn their loss. Be with them and comfort them, Lord. that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest and let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We'd also like to pray, O oh Lord, for all those who are celebrating the gift of life and love. We like to remember today uh, Adeline Gregg, who celebrates her birthday. Happy birthday, Adeline. Uh, from Grace Episcopal Church and for your family and for all those who celebrate their birthdays. We also celebrate and give thanks for all those who are celebrating the gift of love and soulmates that they have together. We give thanks for that love and friendship. We lift up all these prayers, O Lord Christ, this day and for all the blessings of this whole month of July. We ask you to be with us and to hear all these prayers and those prayers that are lifted up, even though this is a pre-recorded message, we pray, Lord, for you, all those prayers that have been online at this time. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue on page 136 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page, excuse me, page 134. I apologize. We're on the bottom of page 134. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, 
that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you have now set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you have a blessed sleep tonight. And please know while I'm on vacation, and this is being pre-recorded, please know I am holding Grace Episcopal Church in my prayers. And also for all of you who are watching, wherever you might be, I hope you have a blessed sleep. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Good night. <laughs>